Well, good morning and welcome to morning prayer. Lord, we lift this day to you and we pray that, Lord, you will use this day for your glory. We thank you that we have this gift of another day. Lord, we pray that we will not waste it. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim before Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty strength and come to our salvation. Turn us again, O Lord. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You give them abundance of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbours and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, O Lord of hosts. Show the light of your countenance that we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You made room around it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow, and the cedars of God by its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea, and its tendrils to the rivers. You are, why then have you broken down its wall? So all who pass by pluck off its grapes. The wild boar out of the wood tears it off, and all the insects of, uh, insects of the field devour it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold. Cherish this vine, which, is your, which your right hand has planted, and let the branch that you made so strong for yourself let those who burnt it with fire, who cut it down, perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand, the son of man you made so strong for yourself. And so will we not go back from you. Give us life, and we shall call upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. In times of trouble we call out to the Lord and we cry, Lord, turn us again. Turn our hearts back to you and then, Lord, you turn back to us. Lord, show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Here the psalmist prays this uh, three times through the prayer. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. He doesn't ask, show us the defeat of our enemies. He says, show us the light of your countenance. And as we see God's holiness, and as we are changed, then we see God's deliverance in our life. Psalm 82. God has taken his stand in the council of heaven. In the midst of the gods, he gives judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show favour to the wicked? You are to judge the weak and the orphan. Defend the right of the poor and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have no knowledge or wisdom. They walk on still in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Therefore, I say that though you are gods and all of you children of the Most High, nevertheless you shall die like mortals and fall like one of their princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for it is you that shall take all the nations for your possession. Here, God judges the leaders and rulers of this world. Um, he used, the psalmist uses uh, over-exaggeration. He calls them gods. The Lord stands in the council of heaven. In the midst of gods, he gives judgment. Those who have been given power over human beings, power over life and death, those who are rulers in that age. And he condemns them for the way they're ruling and reminds them that they are mortals and they will die. And God alone is the judge of all the earth and we call to him to defend the poor and the weak and the needy the weak and the orphan and we call on him to judge the rulers of this world judges chapter 13 verses 1 to 24 the israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the lord and the lord gave them into the hand of the philistines for 40 years there was a man of Zorah, of the, the tribe of the Danites, whose name was Menorah. His wife was barren, having no children. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Although you are barren, having borne no children, you shall conceive and bear a son. Be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, or eat anything unclean, for you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come on his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. And the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his appearance was like that of an angel of God, most awe-inspiring. I did not ask where he came from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, You shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth to the day of his death. Then Mahora entered, Manora entered, entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, I pray, let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us um, what we are to do concerning the boy who will be born. God listened to Manora, and the angel of the Lord came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But her husband Manora was not with her, so the woman ran quickly and told her husband, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manora got up and followed his wife and came to the man and said, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Then Manora said, Now when your words come true, what is to be the boy's rule of life? What is he to do? The angel of the Lord said to Manora, Let the woman give heed to all that I said to her. Surely she may not eat of anything that comes from the vine. She is not to drink wine or strong drink or eat any unclean thing. She is to observe everything I have commanded her. And Manora said to the angel, Allow us to detain you and prepare a kid for you. The angel of the Lord said to Manora, If you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you want to prepare a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. For Manora did not know that he, was, that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manora said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? So that we may honour you when your words come true. But the angel said to him, Why do you ask my name? It is too wonderful. So Manora took the kid with a great offering and offered it on the rocks of the Lord to him who works wonders. When the flame went up towards heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manora and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. The angel of the Lord did not appear again to Manora and his wife. Then Manora realized it was an angel of the Lord, and Manora said to his wife, Surely we shall die. For we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands, or shown us all these things, or now announced to us such things as these. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew, and the Lord blessed him. Here is the story, the prophecy of the birth of Samson, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, the angel appears to the woman and gives her uh, the uh, report, we don't have her name, that's a bit odd, but uh, gives her the report of um, the birth of Samson. When her husband hears, he says, this isn't right, the angel should have appeared to me. So he prays that the angel appears, but when he asks the angel, what do I have to do? He said, well, do what I've already told to the woman. Let the woman give heed to all that I said to her. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine, and so on. We must be those who are prepared to go outside of social norms to hear the voice of God. You see, Man Manora didn't believe that God could speak to and through a woman. It should have been a man. But when the angel spoke to him, he said, Just heed what I've already said. We should be those who are careful to receive the word of the Lord from whomever it comes. Of course, yes, we test it. Of course, we try it. Of course, in this case, they had a measurable time to see if this work came true within a, within a year or so. But uh, they, they, Menorah should have received and accepted that the Lord can speak even through the lowliest um, person. And so should we. This is why in a Baptist church, we have a concept in our church meeting that anyone can speak and bring anything they believe the Lord has laid on their heart to be tested amongst the people. Luke 17, 20 to the end. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. 
for in fact the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Then you will say to, they, they will say to you, look there or look here, do not go, do not set off in pursuit. Whereas the lightning flashes and, the, and lights up the sky from one side to another, so the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must endure much suffering and be rejected by this generation. Just as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed all of them. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, and buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day that Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from heaven and destroyed all of them. It will be like that on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, anyone on the housetop who, is belong who has belongings in his house must not come down to take them away. And likewise, anyone in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Those who try to make their life secure will lose it, but those who lose their life will keep it. I tell you, on that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken and the other left. Then they asked him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. In this reading, Jesus prophesies the end of times. He says, first of all, the kingdom of God is already among you. It's, uh, it, but it's not invisible. Uh, obs things that can be observed. There are no great castles or kings or the trappings of empire but the kingdom of God is within you and is among you but the day is coming when it will be visible the Lord will come he said in those days people will have all kinds of false prophecies don't go chasing around for them but just wait until the day the Lord comes always be looking for the return of the Lord and be ready for it he gives a warning that on that day anyone who is on the housetop and has belongings in the house must not come down to take them away Likewise, anyone in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. So he says that we must make this kingdom our priority. We must make the work of the Lord in our hearts a priority amongst us. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you will be at work in our hearts and lives. Lord, that you will move amongst us in great power. Lord, we pray that you will move in our hearts and in our church. Revive, Lord, your work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let the Lord bless. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we commit this day to you. Amen.